head stay. That's the project I've been working on today. How to change the head stay inside of a pro furl roller furling. So far, the hardest part of this whole job has been to remove this titanium bolt from the aluminum housing that also goes into this stainless steel plate and into this nut that's welded on the back side. That took hours. But right now, what I want to talk to you about is provisioning for an ocean passage. And what could be better than to have a, an exact list of provisions that you will need. You can just go to the store, you go down the list, throw everything in the grocery cart, and before you know it, you're back on the boat, ready to set sail. So let's go down below where it's a little quieter. We have this big ship making a lot of noise behind us, and we'll talk provisioning. Oh, one other thing. If this video is good for you about provisioning, at the end, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. Let's go on down below. Hello, I'm Patrick Childress on Brick House. Rebecca's out shopping right now, so that gives me a chance to spread out here in the main saloon and do this provisioning video for you. The most important part about this whole video is this three-page provisioning list, which is extremely accurate. How I got this list was the first time I ever did a boat delivery between New England and the Caribbean, a crew went with me down to the grocery store and every item that we put in the grocery cart, I wrote down on a list. Once we got to the Caribbean, anything that was left over, I scratched off the list. After three more trips, I developed this very accurate list, which is good for six people for 12 days at sea or two people for 36 days at sea with very little left over. At the end of this video, I'll tell you where to go online so you, you can download this provisioning list. So rather than going to a grocery store and just watching somebody throw a bunch of things in a grocery cart, I'm gonna turn the camera around to the galley where I have some food items set out and we'll go through them item by item, tell you what to get, what not to get, and some things that can cause your problems. Everything I'm going to say here comes from my own personal experiences and observations. But you might like jalapeno peppers, I don't. Um, I might say that American beef is the best beef in the world, and your experience would suggest that, well, maybe Australian and South African is better. But if you have comments, if you have disagreements, or anything you want to add, just write it in the comments down below. That could be a big benefit for everybody. So let's get started. So my experiences for provisioning are through the Caribbean, uh, Central America, and out across the Pacific all the way to Africa. I don't know anything about provisioning in the Med. However, I can tell you that once you leave America, it's a very good chance that you'll never see cheaper prices for food anywhere else in the world. Even if you stock up in Key West, which you think is expensive, wait till you get to Panama. You would think things are cheap in Panama because of the local economy but all their canned goods and a lot of their other items are imported from the U.S. in Panama. However, Panama is far cheaper than anywhere else just about across the Pacific. Tahiti, forget it. You really want to stock up in Panama and uh, work your way to an American associated island, say like American Samoa, where there again you can find a very good variety and much lesser prices than anywhere else in the Pacific. The other uh, place to go for provisioning would be uh, the island nation of Pulau, which is a famous scuba diving destination. Food is a little expensive there, but you have a lot of variety and items that you won't find anywhere else in the Pacific. Uh, New Zealand has a lot of food that's expensive. Australia is outrageous. So you really do try to stock up in the American Associated Islands or before you leave the U.S. The one thing that uh, Americans do that hardly any other culture that I have seen does is refrigerate their e eggs. And just like these eggs are sitting out in the ambient temperatures in Mauritius, you'll find this same scenario across the Pacific. Their eggs will last about four to six weeks just sitting out in the tropics. Sometimes the um, eggs are left out in the sun and you have to really be careful where you buy your eggs from. Occasionally they sell eggs in grocery stores in individual cartons like this plastic, also in paper. We try to stay away from the paper uh, cartons because there might be cockroach eggs in there and uh, that's not a great thing to have little baby cockroaches running around your boat. So we'll save these um, plastic ones, we'll wash them out and reuse them. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It's not like a dozen in America. They go metric in a lot of these other countries. 
And we refrigerate, we have enough room to refrigerate maybe three cartons of eggs and the rest of them just sit out and we'll use the ones that sit out first. So like I say, they'll last four to six weeks just sitting out easily. If you want them to last longer, you can take Vaseline and smear around each egg and then put it in a carton. That's what they used to do long before most yachts had uh, refrigeration and they would last a couple of months that way. You just need to keep the air from penetrating through the egg shell. Uh, milk. Once you leave America, fresh milk, it's very difficult to find and would be incredibly expensive. So you learn to like powdered milk. Sometimes you see in these other countries, like in the Bahamas, they'll have reconstituted milk in the refrigerated section. They're just powdered milk that's been mixed for you and chilled. Uh, you have to check different manufacturers of uh, milk powder and uh, some of them mix easier with water than others. Uh, let's see, dairy products. Cheese, that's not been a big problem. Butter, uh, that can be a little more difficult, but what we do if we're really out in the boonies, say like out in French Polynesia somewhere, we'll always have a backup can of butter. And this says pure creamery butter, Montequila con sal, butter with salt, and it's actually made in New Zealand. New Zealand is a big exporter of canned butter. And in the Bahamas, back in the 70s and 80s, it was everywhere. It's a little more difficult now to find in the Bahamas because they have such good refrigeration and, and power generators in those far out islands. They aren't so far out anymore. Breakfast cereal. Breakfast cereal is incredibly expensive in all of these other countries. Corn flakes, uh, Weetabix, and all that stuff and uh, we just stay away from that. Rebecca still buys some Mueslix from time to time and uh, I would eat the whole box in two mornings but she can make it last a lot longer so it isn't that bad of an expense for us. But I'll buy oatmeal and always get the instant oatmeal. The only difference between instant oatmeal and regular oatmeal is the size of the flake. The regular oatmeal is bigger, the instant or quick fix oatmeal is just more finely cut and ground so it, it cooks faster. However, once you meet a lot of other cruisers out here, they don't bother cooking their oatmeal. They just put it in with their powdered milk in the morning, mix in some raisins, some grated coconut, um, and whatever else they want and make their own mueslicks. The thing with oatmeal is you don't want to buy Chinese oatmeal. Don't try to save money. Chinese oatmeal is full of weevils. And it may not look like it when you buy it in the store, but they will hatch out. American and Australian oatmeal are certainly the best. Uh, I don't know this for a fact, but I highly suspect that they have a heating process during their packaging process that heats the oatmeal and fluffs it with very hot air to kill any of the weevil eggs that are in the oatmeal. It's just a natural fact that weevil eggs are in oatmeal, uh, rice, uh, flour, just any of those green products. Now this oatmeal, jungle oats, guess where that came from? This is a new experiment, it's from South Africa. And so we'll see how long it takes for any weevils to grow in here. Hopefully it won't ever happen. But the thing you don't want to buy is oatmeal in a box. In a box, if it does grow weevils, they'll be out of here in no time, crawling all over your boat, it's disgusting. So in a bag at least like this, it's clear you can see the weevils growing and they will still gnaw a hole out through the bag because they get thirsty and they will start looking for water, whether it's condensation on the top of the galley or even I found a bunch of weevils down in our um, sump pump in the main saloon. So, so oatmeal, stay with the Australian or American brands, don't buy Chinese, it's terrible stuff. The weevils will eat more than what you do. Raisins to go in your oatmeal in the morning. You can buy raisins anywhere. This, these were made in Australia. And you can also get the American made raisins, no problem, just about anywhere in the world. As long as we're on the grains, this is flaxseed meal. This is what I also put in my uh, cereal in the morning. Uh, surprisingly, you can find this red mill brand of um, grains in a lot of places, normally in the larger cities that are more westernized like Penang, Malaysia, or a, a big city in Thailand that has a, a westernized grocery store. 
So it's not everywhere as you cross the Pacific, but it can be found. So a lot of these things you don't want to stock up too much on, especially like flour. Flour and rice. Now rice, take a look at these weevils in this rice. And um, I had this bag of rice. I saw that a couple weevils were growing in there. So I set this whole bag out in the sun all day. And I even turned it over. It was very hot that day. And I thought for sure that would have killed the weevils and the eggs that might be hatching out, and it didn't. So yeah, we lost a whole bag of, of uh, rice to the weevils. And the same thing will happen to flour. So you don't want to overstock on flour or rice. Get what you need, and those are two very easy to uh, get commodities anywhere in the world. There's one other thing about weevils, and that information that I have been able to gather is that it doesn't harm anyone to eat weevil eggs or even the weevils themselves, even if you do it raw. So it's kind of a disgusting thought, but uh, so it's nothing to be too concerned about. So cook them up, and one, one source says, just like a cow goes out and eats grass and now you have protein to eat, they say it's the same with the weevils. No thanks. Another thing is tapioca. Tapioca, I always thought, came in a box from the store. And they're always in little pearls, like in this bag. But actually, tapioca is the root of the manioc plant, which grows throughout the tropics. And natives will use that tuber uh, to make puddings and desserts. It's a thickener, basically. And it doesn't have any flavor unless you put coconut or something else in it. So this is the only tapioca that I have seen outside of the United States and I got this in the very out of the way island of Rodriguez and where this is made and this is made in Thailand popcorn popcorn once you leave America it's all generic stuff unless again you get to an American associated island where you can get the gourmet popping corn uh, let's see sugar Sugar is cheap wherever you go, no problem at all. So you don't have to stock up that much. Tea. Tea is grown in so many places in Australia, Sri Lanka, Malaysia. Don't ever buy stock in a tea company. I think those tea companies, those big, big plantations, they make more money off of giving tours and selling t-shirts to tourists than what they do off of tea. It's a tough business. Now, coffee is a little different story. Here in Mauritius, if you just go down and buy a cup of coffee at the local cafe, it'll cost about three US dollars for just a little shot glass size. Incredibly expensive. And it's also the same in uh, a lot of other countries. So stock up on coffee. You know, and uh, Nescafe seems to be a popular one. Peanut butter, you can get pretty much anywhere. Uh, the problem then becomes jellies and jelly or uh, we preserves so you can still get the smuckers and some of the other good American uh, preserves just about in any major city as we travel around the world but if you can't get what you're looking for the French products are just equal or if not better than some of those American uh, preserves so even with these other products if you can't find the Australian or American the French products are just as good. It's a very good alternative. Pancake syrup. Don't leave home without the maple pancake syrup. It is very difficult to find or extremely expensive to find anywhere else in the world. Sodas, uh, Pepsi products, Coke products, it's cheap wherever you go. No problem at all. Now weevils, getting back to weevils, there, are, there is some information that says if you put bay leaves in a container, that'll discourage weevils. What that means, I really don't know. How do you discourage weevils? Does that keep them from hatching out? Or there's certainly, they're already in the products that you're trying to protect. But hey, it's worth a try. So if you take your jungle oats and put them in a big container with a lid on it, you throw some bay leaves in there, I guess that would be a good experiment and see if um, the it preserves your your breakfast for you or your rice or your flour of course cockroaches can be a big problem 
in some of these foreign countries. We had them once, and what it takes to get rid of them, and actually ants as well, is boric acid. This is an old label, you can't really see it, but it's a white powder on the inside, and you mix that with sweetened condensed milk to make a thick paste. And then once you do that, you just take it, take that paste and put it up behind areas where the cockroaches might crawl and it dries, it stays there forever. They come to eat the sweetness in that sweetened condensed milk. They ingest the boric acid and it doesn't take long to get rid of the whole infestation of ants or cockroaches. Boric acid, even though it says acid, it's really benign. Um, they use this for eyewash. Canned products. Say like if you're in New Zealand, you'll see a lot of canned Chinese imports and it's disgusting stuff. The only Chinese canned items that we'll buy now from our failed experiences is maybe some clean peaches or mandarin oranges. I mean it's the same sweetened kind of artificial colored stuff that you buy in the U.S. I mean how bad can you get? <laughs> but we eat it like dessert. Um, fresh produce, you can get that pretty much anywhere. Say like in islands you can do a lot of trading. Uh, trading items, it can be anything, clothes. I had one man, he just so desperately wanted some britches for his five-year-old son and unfortunately I felt so bad for him that uh, we didn't have anything that small. So you can bring children's clothes, uh, adults clothes, swim masks, swim fins, anything that money would buy. I mean natives in a lot of these out-of-the-way places, they need the things. They don't necessarily need cash, they need the things that the cash would buy, um, especially solar lights. Solar lights are a big deal now, uh, not just flashlights, but something like this movie light that I'm using. This plugs into a solar panel outside, and this is what a native would really want, something that's rechargeable rather than using batteries. Another very unique thing that the natives would like is a gig like this. They're cheap. You can buy them in America at most uh, bait and tackle stores. And they would use this for either spearing fish at night or even lobsters. Very hard to get in the outer islands. Propane. Propane tanks. Uh, what we have on this boat is two backyard barbecue sized propane tanks that you see everywhere in America. Those have gotten us by. Uh, although they did get a bit rusty once we got down to New Zealand, they used the same size tanks with the same fittings. So we were able to trade in our old rusty ones for some very good new ones fully filled. And it cost I think about $35 total for each tank. And uh, since then, I've been very careful anytime we haul out, I'll sand those tanks and prime them and paint them and, and keep them up. Uh, we haven't had too much trouble filling them with propane. Only in Indonesia could it have been a problem, and we even bought special adapters so we could uh, decant from one larger tank to another, to our own, but we never really had to do that. Somehow we always got by, and so we have the uh, connections to decant from another propane tank, but it hasn't been an issue just yet. One backyard barbecue sized tank will last us three months. So we have a good six month supply of propane on this boat. But with the propane, uh, we really don't do much baking because that uses up propane very quickly. I might make some banana bread once in a while and that's about it. We, we try not to bake too much. It's just a tremendous use of propane. Uh, we do have this other barbecue that we use very rarely now. It was kind of a, a unique thing when we first started out sailing, but I'll use it now and then if we're cooking fish or some chicken or maybe some steaks and I, I really want to keep the odor outside of the boat. Of course it just has to be a nice calm afternoon or evening to do that cooking because the wind just blows out the flame so easily. Oh I forgot to mention meat products. Nowhere else in the world is there better beef than what you get in the USA. What other country can afford to feed their cattle corn? And from what I understand, 80% of the corn grown in the U.S. goes to feeding cattle. Australia would be the next best bet for quality of beef, but still, it just falls short. Pork, 
you can get pretty much anywhere except in some of the Muslim countries like Indonesia, Malaysia. You have to go to the Chinese section of town to get pork and it's available. You just have to look around a little bit. Chicken is universal. Anywhere you can get chicken and it's very inexpensive. Water on the boat. Uh, fortunately, I was able to go sailing around the world back in the late 70s and early 80s, long before reverse osmosis water makers were invented. So that is my thinking now. I just don't need a water maker. We do have an RO reverse osmosis water maker on the boat, but in 11 years, we have never needed it. Uh, we don't use it and I have tested the water in a number of places like right here in Mauritius so They come out of the faucet the uh, total dissolved solids was 85 compared to over 200 uh, parts per million for most RO water makers um, there's no microbes in the water here the water I get out of a lot of these faucets at, at docks at marinas is much better than what most yachts can make with their RO systems but each to their own. Um, there's a lot of people out cruising around the world that don't have water makers. They catch rainwater, uh, you put a little bleach in it, a uh, little sodium hypochlorite, and you're good to go. So that saves us a lot of maintenance, a lot of amperage uh, by not having a water maker. Well, that's about all that I can think of right now. Now, to get this provisioning list, go to where is Brickhouse? Com. And if it isn't right there when you open that page, search for provisioning list and that will come up. Well, I hope this video has been helpful for you. And if it was, please give it a thumbs up at the end of this video and please subscribe. And if you have any comments of uh, items I should have been talking about, please leave that information down below. Okay, thanks a lot and we'll see you soon.